Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 32. We're catching up on the comics news. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Joining me as always, my co host, Junior, still eating the Taco Bell Ruiz Coast of Hot Comics Remix. This motherfucker takes a long time to eat a taco. It's been a week. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that must have been a stale ass taco. Or have you just been continually eating tacos since last time I saw you? I like them with some steak. Oh, yeah. I'm almost done. I got two left after this one. Wow, that's some serious taco eating, man. It is. It is. This guy probably just pounded 11 tacos in a matter of minutes. Yeah, because you had one. I had one. It's how I roll, son. It's how he rolls. And this is how rolls on the roll side of my shirt. In the comics news. Uh, Long and hash paused. Star Wars <laughs> comics going to Marvel. We yeah. knew this was coming. I think you oh, guys yeah. called this before. Mm-hmm. I think, didn't you guys talk about this in an uh, ending episode for the season for Comics Remix? It might have been. Maybe. A little bit touched upon it. I know I know. we did mention it, you know, because um, we were we actually thought it was going to happen at the end of uh, 2012, you know, the year that uh, they bought them out or whatever. But it didn't happen, and we're like, oh, okay, so what happens next? And we're like, well, it's going to go back to Marvel. We, everybody knew that, you know. Now, all the news sites were like, will it go back to Marvel? Do you think it will go back to Marvel? No, we just yeah, came no, out and yeah. it's going back to Marvel. You know, like, I think to even should. speculate, it's just, really? You have no foresight if you're going to be like, well, they might go back to Marvel. Come on, dude. Disney owns Star Wars. Disney owns Marvel. Disney owns sense. Marvel, yeah. Dark Horse um, into it, Star Wars. Star Wars. Now, here's the huge, billion dollar question. Will Marvel relaunch Star Wars or will they keep with the or Dark Horse keep, continuity? Yeah, exactly. Will they keep the Dark Horse continuity? Or will they just say, none of that shit for the last 20 years that Dark Horse did is is, is relevant anymore? Well, I mean, does that really matter? Yeah, it does. Because ever since Dark Horse has been publishing the books, coming out with novels, and they've no, built I, the I get that. universe I understand there's an expanded universe. But what's wrong with, you know, a new take on that expanded universe? Maybe Disney has a different idea. Honestly, I'm not like sitting here trying to placate what they're doing because I think it sucks. If I was a fan of the expanded universe, I would be pissed off about this. But I'm not a fan of the expanded universe. But as a fan of Star Wars, I am glad that George Lucas no longer controls it. Am I sad to see Dark Horse lose it? Yeah, totally. Because you know I've just started getting into all their Star Wars stuff. I just and now I even want to buy reading it because they're not going to have it anymore. Well, they're going to end it all off. You know, they're going to have an ending to it. But. Well, I know that, I, but it, I just, it makes me not want to take the time though to read it all because I mean there's quite a little bit. For some reason, I just feel that Marvel is going to like it's going to be. It won't have the same vibe. It's going to be like, like a watered down Marvel team of Han Solo and Spider Man, you know? <laughs> Daredevil, Greedo. Daredevil and Job of the Hood, Greedo versus Deadpool. Who right? shot first? Oh yeah, Jesus. Yeah. It'll be terrible. They'll murder it. I mean, we like we said, we knew it was coming back. The million dollar question is, how do they handle it? I'm actually surprised Disney hasn't launched more Disney characters back in the comic books. Because, you know, Walt Disney characters had comics. I mean, there were Walt Disney comics that was... Well, they have... Um, you know... They're slow. They have Disney stuff that they that Marvel publishes. Mm-hmm. It's not like... They have, like, the Mickey Clubhouse magazine. Uh, the Disney fairies have theirs. Princess has their own. But they're magazines. Right now, the only hardcore comic... That they're publishing because like Muppets and uh, Monsters Inc. Those were all like miniseries, right, right. shots and shit. They're doing a book right now, currently called uh, Disney um, Disney. Damn, what? Seekers of the World or some shit like that. I don't know, but we don't stock it in the kids section. No. So it's. I mean, it was an inevitability. It happens. Right, right. What are you right. gonna do? You know, I honestly feel like that that sucks for for fans of Star Wars comics. Uh, myself, I feel like it sucks. Yeah, because you got a lot of people out there who won't read Marvel, even if you yeah, know, so no, totally, like, Fuck totally. That, I'm done. It's crazy how much of that their allegiance there is to comic book companies in the comic book world, the community. It's gonna be known as the day, uh, the day Star Wars died, right? March. And then Episode Seven comes out and be super badass, and Star Wars is all of a sudden the greatest thing ever since sliced bread again. Well, that, I, I'm hoping, man, because the prequels were sad. I wish, my, I wish DC not, or I mean Disney not that they own. Star Wars would wipe the slate clean on those pre- prequels and maybe redo them. You know what? The story wasn't bad. It was the acting. Man, it was the execution of the story was poor, too. Like, there were moments in those movies. I know we're totally tangenting out of comics news, but that's how we roll. Right. There were points in those Star Wars movies where characters were put into peril that you knew weren't going to die 
because they still had shit to do. It's called adventure. Nah, but that's it's. But there, so there was okay. There was I understand that. Yes, it is called adventure. And but there was so movies, much meat to that story. Those that movies. There were other the, aspects of the story I would prefer to see instead of bullshit. The prequel movies were more aimed Carol. towards. You really think about it, the younger Kids audience. Kids toys, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. So they had to kind of dumb it down. Now I wouldn't even say dumb it down, but you got a five year old who goes to the movie theater, and they've seen all the Star Wars movies, and they think this is the greatest thing, you know. So I'm gonna watch it. Oh my God, is my hero gonna get out of this? As an adult, yeah, we know he is. Yeah. The kid doesn't know, and that's that level of excitement they were pulling from there. Actually, the story wasn't bad, just the execution. Ah, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. But anyway, you know, bad news for Dark Horse. Good news for Dark Horse. Negotiating with Nintendo to do Nintendo comics. Yeah. That is a score, dude. That's a score. Zelda's gonna be good. I can oh tell you that God. much. Metroid so will be good. To Zelda. But I'm not sure how a Mario comic book. I don't really like. think a Mario comic book would work. Uh, well, same thing was said about Sonic the Hedgehog. That's true. It's 250 something issues strong. Really? 200? Wow. Go Sonic. My last, last issue of Sonic the Hedgehog that came out was I think 258, 260 even. Um. And that's his, obviously the ongoing one since the 93, I believe. But he's got a second ongoing called Sonic Universe. That just hit, like, issue 55 or something like that. There's a demand, man. People like wow, Sonic. that's uh, amazing. No, I could definitely, like, when I first read the news of the Dark Horse, and the man, Link, like, a Legend of Zelda ongoing. Holy that's, shit. like, the only one. It would be so fucking great. Because when you think Nintendo, what do you think? Mario Brothers, Metroid, and uh, Zelda. Zelda, yeah. Some Kid Icarus. I'm sure mm. they could do some Kid Icarus book. I also you know, think Mega Man, but they've already they already produced a Mega Man. Comic. Yeah. Well, Mega Man. I don't think Nintendo owns Mega Man. I think no, that's Capcom. Capcom. But see, when I say Nintendo, now I'm going back to like the games I played on the no, system. No, totally. Yeah. Well, that's I mean? why I was going to be like, you Castlevania would be a sweet comic, but that's not Nintendo either. I don't think so. No, I think that might. Would work. I think that might work as a, like as a limited series. Yeah. Because there's too much shit on the shelf already like it. Yeah. You know, Vampire Hunter True that. or Demon Hunter or whatever. Is, you know, is, and it's like it is an overbeaten. Uh, so I think fans of it will check it out, Area, but yeah. I think it's one of those yeah, no, six issues at max, yeah. maybe four. Yeah, that's why I was, I was, that made me curious about He-Man, how long was that He-Man ongoing going to last? It's still going, I think we're just 12, 13 issues, something like that. Still running? Something like that. He-Man. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You have to cut that pause out. Yeah, no, that's not an issue. That's funny. Yeah, uh, Master of the Universe. I mean, they did a six issue. Man. You, you think stuff like that's going to be good for just like, like you said, limited. But I was surprised DC ran with the uh, Zelda would be the only one I could see as an ongoing. Maybe Metroid. Mar- like I said, the one I want to see them like hit a home run with is Mario because I can't see how you can do Mario and make it seem serious. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what? I mean, if they were lazy, because I think Dark Horse, I think serious comics. There's like I don't think a- kid comics with Dark Horse. Yeah, neither do I. God, legitimately doing like a... Man, I don't think people would accept that, man. I think taking... I think... Okay. I think there's this cute quality to Mario and this very kid-friendly appeal that you couldn't take Mario and darken him up because if you did, you'd get the Super Mario Bros. movie and we already saw that. Yeah. You I know? was a fan of that movie. I, I liked it when I was a kid. Mario. You know, yeah. I was a teenager. I took my little brother to see it. I wanted to be like, yeah, fucking Mario Brothers, you know? But, eh, I don't think you could take it serious then. I think I really think if you tried to update Mario and make him a Dark Horse comic, you would get that friggin', what was it, 91? Super something Mario Brothers, like 90, 92, like 92. But you know what's funny about that movie? Bob that is Oscars the first... John Leguizamo. That is the first um, uh, property movie that I saw translated from either a comic or a TV show or a video game into a movie. Yeah. And I was just like, that is nothing. Like, because I'm waiting for him to jump up and hit like a cylinder block. Yeah, it was block. terrible. I'm waiting for him to at least wear the plumber hat. I was like, why is Luigi the something. leader and like 20 years younger? Yeah. You know? So, it's that's, that's going to be the tough one. If you can pull that one off, you're good. Yeah, absolutely. That would, that would take some work. But I think, like you said, Zelda's a gift. Can you imagine if Alan Moore... Rope, Super, Super Mario, Mario Brothers. Brothers. That'd be some funny shit. That would be some shit. Alan Moore's all that. Or Grant Morrison's trip. Well, oh I don't. I wouldn't God. read it. I don't like Grant Morrison. It'd be like Super Mario. Well, you know what? <laughs> Super Mario and the mushrooms and shit. Mm. Th- that name. might lend it well to Grant Morrison's writing style. No, 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 no. One name. Garthinus. Garthinus. 
Put him on Mario Brothers. Yeah. That'd be some brutal ass Mario. Mm hmm. Mario would be like all old and coked out. And he, he would make Mario the villain. So it would be all backwards and it'd be all in its head and he'd be a drugged out, crazy person. I have this theory that Which Garth Enos. has been Enos, done online in memes. Really? Yeah. Nice. I have this theory that Garth Enos <clears throat> hates superheroes. Uh, I don't know. But moving on, we're, we're tending to ramble here. We are tending to ramble a little bit. So, DC. A lot of DC stuff. Maybe not a lot, but whatever. There's some DC news. Some big news. Forever Evil still running. Yeah, um, number six just came out last week. Oh, no, two are, weeks ago. Excuse me, two weeks ago. People are having spasms that Nightwing's dead. He's not dead. They didn't show him die. No. It's what they like, showed was Luther. Spoiler alert. Um, Luther kind of cover his mouth and nose. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know, right when he's like, it looked like Nightwing was going to fall over or faint, Batman attacked him. So they're fighting, and if Luther's like, no, wait, everything's all right, everything's all right. I'm guessing it's one of those tricks, you know, like how they teach the Marines or something, like hold your breath longer, right. uh, slow down your pulse so it seems like your heart. So I'm thinking that's some sort of method he did to make it look, because they said the only way to stop that bomb was to stop. His heart stops, yeah. Exactly. So I'm thinking it's something oh, like yeah, that. Totally. You know? No way. And then he's going to turn out to be alive, and he'll be the guy that was in that Thanksgiving. With uh, the blonde hair? Yep. Yep. So, and now, has there been any word that Nightwing, the title, will be canceled itself? Mm-hmm. Because uh, hey, issue thirty, it's, it's it's done. Yeah, issue thirty, uh, Nightwing, Teen Titans, Stormwatch, and there was a fourth one. Wow. Um, Stormwatch but, and Teen Titans finally getting the axe. Yeah. Stormwatch, both those titles are actually long overdue. Yeah. Nightwing, and, I think they just did that out of necessity. There was a fourth one too. I can't remember what it was, but there's a fourth one that's being canceled as well. Issue thirty. Oh, oh, not issue thirty. Uh, Justice League of America. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Because it's become going to become uh, uh, United. Or United, some shit. yeah. It was going to be Canada. Now it's United. Canada. <laughs> sure, those can Canadians, <laughs> those candidates are upset. Like bacon and bacon maple syrup. Right. Have them yeah, they're probably pissed. I got. I love Canada. Canada. Actually, if I were to move out of the U.S., if I were to move out of Chicago, go to Canada. I'd go to Canada. If I had to go pick somewhere, I'd, I'd go to Canada, dude. Totally in a heartbeat. I just don't like that their prices are so jacked. Yeah. It is, it is what it is there in good old Canada. So, yeah, I think it's stupid. You know, to me, this whole thing that they're doing with Nightwing is kind of like a slap in the face to fans because there was so much buildup of that character leading up to... Forever Evil. Uh, well, not even that. Before Flashpoint. Like, they were really yeah. bringing him to the next level to be like... He was standing tall, like, I'm fucking just as good as Batman so I'm fucking Nightwing. Right. They had moved him up to the like, upper tier. And then now he's shit, and they killed him, and it's going to be blonde, because they Peter Parkered his ass like Civil War. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's bogus. It yeah. happens. And then more crap coming out of Forever Evil. And this is another thing, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that, and then I'm going to tell you how I hate they do this. Lex Luthor is joining the Justice League. What do you mean? Lex Luthor is going to be a member of the Justice oh, League. Oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. And he's like, what, Batman and Wonder Woman, I think, yeah. on the team? Superman's going to be taking a hiatus. Yeah, doing whatever Superman does because Luther's on the team. Luther's gonna be on the team. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Shake things up. Maybe they look at it as maybe this is our uncanny Avengers. I mean, regardless, it's villains and heroes. But you get my point. I I could see your point there, but man, I don't really. Now, what were you surprised in Forever Evil number six when it was revealed that Alexander Luther was the one under the hood? No. And that he has the powers of Shazam now. The, the Shazam powers were a surprise, <coughs> but it being Alexander Luther was not. Right. That was the one thing I was spot on sure it was going to be. Now, my question is, I don't, I don't know, maybe I just didn't catch it, or maybe they haven't revealed it, or maybe it's a writing loophole or whatever, or uh, uh, a plot hole, excuse me. They were talking about when the sky rips and the guy who can destroy the world shows up. Uh-huh. But at the same time, the hooded prisoner was the one that they were kind of fearing or keeping intact, right? Because was it the hooded prisoner was the one that could stop the monster that was coming through the, the terror, right? Is that what it was? Or was the hooded monster, the hooded uh, captive, the monster they were talking about? I don't you know. You know what? No, no, no. It was You just uh, confused <laughs> Sorry, I probably confused myself. No, I remember. It is the one where um, they had the hooded prisoner in case uh, that thing ever returned. That's what it was. That thing that destroyed our planet, so we can throw it at him. Okay, right, right. Yeah, no, totally. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was. It being Alexander Luther wasn't a, a surprise to me. Him being evil was, and him being Shazam was. The Shazam part, yeah. I don't really know if I'd call him evil, 
because the first thing he did was take down the syndicate. Well, yeah, no, that's which, what he said. He wanted they, to kill all of them, and he would be the greatest hero. Right. So I wouldn't call him an evil. Yeah, psychotic a little bit, maybe. Yeah. But how psychotic compared to the end of uh, Infinite Crisis? Remember that? Yeah. Where he was in the alley and then Joker and uh, Luther sick Joker on him? Totally. That yeah. was excellent. That was crazy. And it was just like in broad day in the alley. Excellent way to fit the Joker into that, too. You know? Joker had no business in that whole thing until then. He was used perfectly there. Yep. But, yeah, you know, forever evil for me. It's been okay. I really dug the kryptonite snorting Ultraman, dude. That shit's that is, crazy. Yeah, I was, I was actually surprised they went that route. You know, kids read comics, so they're yeah, like, why totally. is he snorting this? Because he's a fucking bad guy. You <laughs> know? <laughs> At so least they like, made him a bad guy. You know, they haven't showed him in any kind of a pleasant light at all. Oh, of course. Like, he's be, an asshole. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like, kids read it like, whoa, yeah. I can sniff stuff to get stronger? You know, like, I, I don't know. But then again, DC didn't, like, with their comics code, um, they still don't have their characters smoking. Because remember, when they had the comics code, they took that out because they said it was setting a bad example. Yeah. Which is why they had... Constantine doesn't smoke. No, not anymore. I know Marvel does none of their characters smoke. Because la- I remember the last big character that smoked, obviously besides Wolverine and Ben Grimm, was Mary Jane. Oh, she, Mary Jane was a smoker. Huh? She was good. like in the nineties. She oh, was a big crazy. smoker. I remember that. She would look, read Amazing Spider-Man, like especially around issues three ninety to three ninety five. There's a big thing where her and Peter get into it because they're talking about she's a smoker. her health and possibly starting a family and all. Because that was that time where she was almost pregnant, not too long after that. Wow. And then he was like, you need to give up. And there's been a lot of scenes where she's, like, crushing a pack of cigarettes and she's stressing over where Peter is because of the maximum carnage shit that was going mm-hmm. on. So she's lighting up the cigarettes. And, wow. But I, I remember they, they stopped having their character smoke because it was setting a bad example. Mm-hmm. And then I know DC, you haven't seen it in a while, but then after a little while, they just gave it to, like, like Perry White, I believe. Whenever they draw him, he's still got a cigar in his hand, mm-hmm. you know, shit like that. But, you know, Superman sn- or Ultraman snorting kryptonite, you know. That's some shit, man. That's some shit. Now, I will admit, it, it would have been blatant if they had him, like, sitting at a table. Yeah, like, that's, yeah, but he's just, like... Like, just on the fly, you know. You know? He's just finding the shit crushing his hand and, like, yeah. snorting right out of the fucking air. Yeah, if he'd have been, like, chopping it up and... Well, he was. And the first time they showed him do true. it, he had it on a tray, remember? Yeah, that's true. Fuck. That was, that was crazy. serious, man. It was crazy. I now, was really like, "Oh, this is gonna be fucking stupid." Okay, now here's here's the hardcore Superman. Right here's here. the money question: Forever Evil Seven. Now we know with a lot of these six, seven issue uh, events, by the time you get to five or six, that's like your biggest wow factor. And all seven does is, since it's the last issue, usually direct, just set up where it's, what's going on next. That or just drive it all together like really, really fast and mm-hmm. sloppy. You know, they should, if anything, the last issue should always be the big. <gasps> You know, the big right. cliffhanger and shit. Like, wow, that was great. Now it seemed like... To me, I think 6 is going to be the big one. You know? So, that's just my opinion. Yeah, we'll see. I, I hope it's not. I really hate that. I really hate that when it's all this great build-up and then it just, like you said, yeah. it's a sloppy fucking mess at the end. Yeah. Or, you know, it's... I prefer it be a sloppy mess out the gate. And then I'll probably connect it back out at some point. But don't, like, give me good and then get right to the end of, like, uh Right, right. I mean, it was, this was, like, a good, heavy action, like, brutal event for DC. Not really kid-friendly with the, you know, crazy kryptonite Kryptonite story of Superman and everybody killing the shit out of people. Yeah. I did like uh, uh, Captain Cold, that that, uh, voice activation on his cold gun. Yeah. And he kicks out Johnny Quick's leg. Yeah. pretty cool. That was badass. It reminded me of Jeff Johns' Teen Titans number two or number three back in like the early 2000s when Mm -hmm. Superboy started rocking the black shirt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they were going up against Deathstroke. And he fucked up and Impulse and he, the kneecaps? Yep. Yeah, I remember that. Kind of reminded me of that. What do we got? So we've got uh, more DC. I'm just going to wrap this up with DC, and then I'm going to bring it back to something I want to talk about that was spawned by the Lex Luthor joining the Justice League. Wally West is coming back. Or I should yeah. say, making his first appearance in the DC new. Yeah. Uh, Flash annual number three. People are excited. Some people are worried. I don't really care anymore. When I was introduced to The Flash in comics, he was Wally West. Yeah, same here. When I was introduced to The Flash in general, he was Barry Allen, because I used to watch him on a TV show. Yeah, see, that's you know what? TV show. I'm like you, my first real, like, oh, that's who The Flash is? I mean, I knew Flash had been in comics before, but I don't think I really knew who he was, because he wasn't one of the characters I wanted to follow when I was a kid. Right. But when that 90s Flash TV show came out, I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. And then I read, you know what, actually, I think I was reading the comics before that show came out. Yeah. I think I saw it and got excited and then started buying comics. 
and then the show came out, and I was like, oh, it's not Wally. See, but I don't throw my like paint. I don't throw a fucking fit when it's like Wally or Barry. I mean, they each serve their purpose. You know what I mean? They're both two completely different flashes. Oh, absolutely. I had liked honestly when they brought Barry back. I was excited because I was getting bored of Wally and his family and stuff and his irritating kids and their weird superpowers. And he was becoming boring. But I did like the whole dynamic they created at the end of Flash Rebirth, and it sucks to see that's all gone. So who knows how Wally's going to be as Stephanie Brown, who comes back in Batman Eternal? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, she came back already. Oh, is she back already? Her first, uh, her first issue. Which a lot of people, if you don't know, and you want to uh, jump on and go get these books before they're uh, they're gone, Batman number twenty eight from the New Fifty Two. It's a side issue. It, it interrupts the current story arc that they have going with the whole zero year. Mm-hmm. And uh, what they do is take a break, and it's it jumps into the future a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it takes place sets up the eternal storyline. That's what with Harper Row is uh, Bluebird. Yeah, Bluebird, yeah. Because they go to uh, this, yeah, it's in the future because Selena Kyle has her own place, like her own penthouse kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like she's like one of the like kind of the, she took over the penguins role. Yeah, she's like yeah, like a kingpin. Yeah, yeah I read so that. it was a good issue. They show up and then Stephanie Brown's at the end of the issue. Remember, like oh Stephanie Brown, she calls herself the spoiler, and she's sitting in a chair That's in the interrogation right. room. That's right. So Batman Twenty Eight is the issue to go get if for all you Stephanie Brown fans that wanted her back in the New Fifty Two universe. Batman Twenty Eight, go get it. Now this is the for me what I really wanted to talk about after talking about these things do you feel like so these companies me? jump to me I always feel like I do the same watch me no uh, do, you, do you feel like it's BS when the comic company reveals that they're going to do something before they actually do it are you talking about the Twitter war between Bleeding Cool and Dan Slot? no did you not hear about that no oh dude Dan Slot ripped Bleeding Cool a new asshole because he was like upset that Bleeding Cool would sit there and they spoil shit before it's put on the racks. And they had they had said something, I believe, about one of the uh, the Spider Man book. I believe. I, I, don't quote me on that part. But uh, I remember Dan Slott tweet, tweeted them. And he's like, "Why do you guys do that?" He said, "You guys broke the news. Why did you? Nobody else decided to break this news. You broke it. Why would you spoil it? Why not?" You know, wait. They're like, oh, we put a spoiler warning on there, and like they're trying to defend themselves. And Dan Slott's like, look, just why would you do that? Nobody buys the books after that, and then you guys want to report that the book sales are low. Guess why? Because people like you want to spoil it. If you have to post the spoilers, why not wait till Wednesday night so people at least get off of work and then go to the store and pick their books up? You spoil it Tuesday morning when you guys get the books or something, or Wednesday morning. Mm-hmm. People are waking up; they haven't gone to the shop yet. You know, it was, you got to look that up, man. It, it was I'll like check that out. it was crazy. It was it was really really good. No, it's well. It seems to me that like in their rush to promote new books, which honestly I don't really feel like promoting these books is going to really. They need to take it in a different direction than how they do it because the way they're promoting, we hear about it, but it's not really getting out to the people they're trying to get it out to. They need to start putting comic book trailers on their movie trailers, like oh this is the new. You know what I mean? I mean try that'd be like, interesting. I mean how DC did that new Fifty Two commercial. They need to do something like that, man. That'd be very interesting. You know, fucking start playing them in movie theaters. Get because that's gonna that's gonna expose people that have never seen it before. Oh, I, I agree. You know, I agree. How come you ain't thought about? It? Give me a call, DC ideas. ideas. I wrote that. That's right, Pat Sanchez. But no, no I, I agree. Like, but to answer your question, no, I don't think these um, these websites, these outlets, and stuff need to be posting these spoilers. You know, at least wait. Well, know? I mean, the company itself, though. Like, the company, they announced oh, the company. Yeah, that's right. that Wally was coming. Like, why not just wait? Because they want like, people... Oh, shit! They want, they, they want to get people in there just to buy it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's a two-sided thing, you know? On a business standpoint, it makes perfect sense. Oh, it does, but to you me, know? It, it pisses me off. But, um... And it's not really so much the Wally West thing that pisses me off. It's like the... Ending of story arcs I'm reading getting ruined by them being like, oh, this upcoming issue that's three fucking months from now, you know, that, you X-23 know what is going to be on all new X-Men, but they wait, geez, shit, you They should tease up. the shit and have it Avengers where it's always a guess, yeah. where they don't say, oh, somebody from the previous universe is making their debut in this book. I mean, obviously, then you'd be like, oh, obviously, it's a Flash book, it's Wally West, you know, but they never say yes or no, so you're assuming it's Wally West. Right. You know what I mean? So you wouldn't know until you went and picked up the issue. I think that if there was a way around it, there's a way to word the shit. So it's not a complete spoiler, but you kind of still get people. Guessing. I mean, I remember being a kid and before the internet was around, when characters that you had like they would just show up, like, "Oh shit, that's, that's awesome. awesome!" And you didn't know till like you know you got. Well, see, remember when we were kids, the internet. Yeah, wasn't the internet was yeah, totally. It was all talk shop talk. 
up. So no, it's like always Wizard or something, you know. Even with Wizard, what they did, what they would do was just put old artwork and talk about some of the upcoming story arcs and character development. They wouldn't give out spoilers though, and they could run those articles three or four pages long. That's how we got our news. Was Wizard? Yeah, totally, absolutely. You know, well, well, those days are gone. Those days are gone, and now everything just gets ruined for us. Yep. And comic books just aren't as fun as they used to be. Unfortunately, that needs to change. That really does need to change. It does. And we'll be talking about that in an upcoming issue of the Spin Around. Yes, sir. But as for this, that uh, pretty much wraps up most of our news mm. for the coming months. I'm sure there's some things we missed, but... We'll get to them. We'll get to it. If not here, I'm, uh, I'm breaking the fourth wall. As for now, Star Wars comics leaving Dark Horse. Boo! Dark Horse getting Nintendo. Yay! Yeah. Wally West, Flash. Eh, if you're into that, same thing with Stephanie Brown. Lex Luthor, Justice League. Guess we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I guess it'll be kind of interesting. He's kind of a dick. Kind of makes Batman look like a douche sometimes, too. Yeah. Which I don't, I, I'm a big Batman fan. Why do I feel like the reason he's in the Justice League, it's going to be like government sanctioned, obviously, or they'll have an overlook, but it'll be something like in the line of uh, how Norman Osborn did the end of Se- Yeah, when he ran S.H.I.E.L.D. because of what the world saw with the the end of Secret Invasion. They saw right, him right. kill the squad. So I think it's going to be something where Luther is put in that light where the people are, uh, of, the, of the world are all like, oh my God, yes, Luther saved us. You know, he needs to be in charge of these guys running around or whatever. So, because I know they were, weren't they putting Task Force together to take down the Justice League? That's why they put Justice League of America Yeah, that's together. what JLA was, yeah. So I'm thinking it's going to be something like, okay, the Justice League can exist as long as we have somebody in the group. And that somebody was voted to be Luther or something. I think that's the route they're going to go with it. Mark my words. Hey, intro, I, I, you know, I don't understand, like, okay. But I'll why check else? It out, why check else it would out. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and all the other members of the league be like, all right, yeah, Lex, you can join? I don't think it was in their call. It, it wasn't their call. That's what I'm honestly God going to say because I can't think of anything else. I mean, I'm going to say this. The one thing that I like about this event is like a lot of the events that have come up. It felt like it was just forcing some. They were just the means to an end. Like uh, Age of Ultron. The whole Age of Ultron. The means Angela was getting Angela and to break time. That was really it, right? She didn't break time. No, I, I mean the, well, the Angela. Series. Angela yeah, yeah. It was just to uh, to to establish that the time stream continue, space time continuum was done. You know. Oh, and to put Galactus in the Ultimate Universe. Put Galactus in the Ultimate Universe. Actually, if you look at some of the payoffs, Galactus in the Ultimate Universe. Um, you Angela. Had Angela. You had um, the, 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 all, the all new X Men. Right. The teenagers. They're stuck. They can't go back. Right. So, what kind of effect does that play? If they're not playing out their part But that didn't past. come out of, I'm just saying that didn't come out of the event itself. Yeah, it did. I mean, after it's, effects, it's, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, it wasn't set up in the event. Nothing was set up in that event. Well, Besides Angela and Avengers Galactus. Avengers AI. That's it. That was all. Galactus going to yeah. the Ultimate Universe was set up in the final pages of Ultimate. Or Age of Ultron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That kind of shit. Gotcha. But anyway, I mean, Luther on it. We'll see. It's, I felt like it's been a good, solid event. Luther me in the Justice League. We'll see. Yeah. Future's End. I don't know if I'm excited about that, but when we hear more, I'm sure we'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. It's been issue... 32. 32. Keep the ball rolling. That's right, buddy. My name is Big B. Brian Adams, and always my co-host, Junior. Yep. As always, the hub for all we do, comicsremix.com. Facebook, Twitter, email, comicsremix at gmail.com. Or, or if you want to talk to me or Junior specifically, it's just what? Junior at comicsremix.com. Yes, sir. Brian, comicsremix, yada, yada. Join us back here next week when we'll be talking about... All that's been in the movie news while we've been gone. See you next week. Peace.